what do you mean by free will? And what do you mean by there's no such thing as free will? I think where people get into trouble is two realms where they decide they're seeing free will because it just feels like it and where they're not and where that gets you into trouble. The first one is when you actually make a choice, you form an intent and you choose something. You're choosing between Coke and Pepsi. You're choosing between invading this neighbor or that neighbor, whatever it is you're making. And you form an intent. You're consciously aware that you're making this decision. Um, you got a pretty good sense what the consequences are going to be. Most importantly, you know, nobody's holding a gun to your head. You've got alternatives available to you. And for most people and the criminal justice system, that's necessary and sufficient to say, that's it. There's free will, there's responsibility, there's culpability, which gives me apoplexy at that point, because that's like a 10th of 1% of what you need to be paying attention to. Because you look at somebody who just had this intent and they carried it out and they knew it was going to have this effect and they knew they could have done otherwise. And you're learning zero unless you ask the question, how did they turn out to be the sort of person who would form that intent at that moment? And that's 99.9% .9 of what goes on. And we have this, this intuitive trap of it feeling so tangible when you've just chosen between this or that, when you've decided what you want to do and you choose and you, that most of the time we're not thinking, how did I turn out to be somebody who would have that desire, that intent at that point? And that's where all the free will disappears. The other domain, which is like the, the quicksand for everyone, is like you look at someone who's had some lousy luck and adversity and all of that, and somehow they reinvent themselves. They pull themselves up by their bootstraps. They show incredible self to, you know, these, these heartwarming stories. Or you look at somebody who has had every possible advantage and they just piss it away with self-indulgence. And there's this huge, huge temptation there to think that when it comes to self-discipline and backbone and gumption and all of that, that's not made of biology. That's magic. That's free will. Like biology may have something to do with, you know, whether you're good at playing lacrosse or whatever weird sports are happening right now in France, it, you know, but that's, that tells you nothing about who's going to push through the pain and do it. And that's where we get back to the prefrontal cortex. What do you, how would the attributes you wound up with are purely biological interaction with environment and what you do with them, purely biological, self-control, self-discipline, all of that is made out of the same biology yuck as is anything else in your brain. And it's all coming out of the prefrontal cortex. Like every time life has you in a position where like you got to make a choice and there's a smarter one, but the other one's more tempting. The choice that you wind up making is entirely a function of how do you wind up getting to that point? How do you wind up with a prefrontal cortex that would have the power or not, that would have the values or not as to what counts as self-discipline? All of that. And what we know is that's the realm in which for a billion different reasons, you had no control over what life handed you in that regard. It's starting with being a fetus, like a mother's socioeconomic status is already influencing the rate of cortical development in her fetus. Like, ooh, you some free will. I'm going to pick to be in the womb of somebody of high socioeconomic status. So I get born with already the starts of a great prefrontal. At the moment of birth, all of this, you had no control over the circumstances that produced the you, who you are at this moment was already in effect. And where that plays out most dramatically is at those junctures and where you got to make a choice. And if you do the impulsive 
disinhibited one, it's going to seem wonderful for three seconds and you may regret it for the rest of your life. Just at every juncture where we have that moment, what we're doing is saying, what kind of prefrontal cortex did our cumulative bad luck and good luck starting with the time that we were a single fertilized egg? Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.